Today we will discuss Wayland. If you're new to Linux or just trying to understand Wayland, you're in the right place. Let's break it down into simple terms and use simple analogies to help you understand. But before we dive into the details, let's just say that Wayland helps graphical applications to show up on the screen properly. There seems to be a battle currently going on between the X11 and the Wayland users, and it probably will stay that way until Wayland eventually becomes the new standard. But why does it have the potential to become the new standard for Linux displays? So it all starts with the client server model. I took this picture from the Wikipedia page to help you illustrate that idea. So there are two types how a client server model can be implemented as far as I understand. So one is exactly as shown on this diagram, where the server is located on the separate piece of hardware or on a separate computer, like here, and then the clients are the other devices connected to that server computer via the network. But clients and the server can also exist on the same system, so they don't have to be separate pieces of hardware. In this case, I call it the software implementation of the client server model, and in in that situation, the clients and the server are separate pieces of software on the same system. And we will talk about this particular situation more. There are different types of servers out there, file servers, web servers, display servers, etc. They are all categorized by the type of service they provide. So X server and Wayland Compositor are both display servers and belong to the software implementation version of the client server model. They are also both written in the programming language C, in case you're curious. So the display server is simply a software component from the overall software environment that runs on your computer. So the main difference between both display servers lies mainly in the architecture of how that client server model is implemented. So we established that there is something called X server and Wayland server. Now, the clients in this case are the graphical applications, something like your web browser or your text editor like VS Code or image viewer like GIMP, so anything that pops out in a window. Now, clients or the graphical applications need to communicate with the server somehow to request being displayed on a screen or accept input from the user. And they do so by referring to a system of predefined rules or called either X11 protocol or Wayland protocol. So the X11 or Wayland protocols are languages, so to speak, that help to communicate the messages between the graphical applications and the display server. Now there are two aspects to this communication, selecting and displaying the appropriate window, especially if you have many windows at the same time open and handling things like window decorations, moving windows, resizing, etc. In X11 architecture, there is an additional layer that acts and interacts with the X server to manage how windows appear and behave on the screen. And that additional layer is also called a compositor or a window manager, even though that's a separate piece of software from the X server. This extra layer can add complexity and potential performance overhead. In Wayland architecture, the Wayland compositor acts both as the display server and the window manager. As a simple analogy, um, imagine you are in a busy office where you have a receptionist, and you can think of this receptionist as the X11 window manager, who handles all the messages and requests from different departments, in other words, graphical applications. This receptionist can get overwhelmed because they have to handle everything before passing the messages from different departments to the production plant. Now, if you replace that receptionist with a direct messaging system, a Wayland compositor, where each department or graphical application can communicate directly with each other and the production plant without going through a receptionist. This makes the process more faster and more efficient because there is no middleman like the window manager. So in summary, Wayland removes that middleman, allowing applications to communicate directly with the display server, thus leading to better performance. X11 has been around for decades, since 1980s, and it did a great job, but it's getting old, and it has some issues like being slower in some cases and less secure. And hence, the security is largely due to the fact that each graphical application runs within its own environment so that there is less surface for attacks and other non-authorized applications interfering. We can think of this like upgrading from an old car to a new, more efficient one. The old car still works, 
but the new one runs smoother, has better features and safety, until it eventually becomes the new standard, though the journey there might not be without hiccups. These improvements are why many Linux distributions are starting to adopt Wayland as their main display protocol. Fedora, for example, has used Wayland as its default for their GNOME desktop since version 25, released in 2016, and for its Plasma desktop since version 34. Ubuntu also switched to Wayland by default, starting with version 17.10, though it later reverted back to Xorg in 18.04 LTS. Ubuntu 21.04 and their later versions have Wayland as their default again, and the Ubuntu 24.10 will default to Wayland for its NVIDIA users. Debian uses Wayland for its GNOME desktop by default since Debian 1, and OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 and later versions use Wayland by default for GNOME. So in a nutshell, Wayland is the modern protocol designed to replace the old X11 protocol and make your Linux experience faster, more secure, and more efficient. I hope this video helped you to understand what Wayland is and why it is important for the future of Linux. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.